black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. And I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll, I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya! Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. Going to be talking to Patrick, and Patrick comes to us from Iowa, and he had a terrifying night out there. He was helping his girlfriend move at the time, and they decided after they got done moving everything, they sat around the campfire, and one of these creatures approached and just went nuts. Uh, It was a hell of a night. And one of the things that's fascinating about this type of encounter, I always warn people, you never know who you're going to run into or what you're going to run into. And it may not be the friendly forest giants when you're out there. Uh, You may come across one that's in a bad mood, and uh, it'll strike terror terror in you uh, when these things go off. And Patrick experienced that firsthand. Uh, So we'll be talking to him tonight. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member, get additional shows. Uh, It's a cool site. So if you get a chance, check it out. I hope to see everyone at the International Bigfoot Conference. I know it's coming up August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd. Uh, If you get a chance, go to the internationalbigfootconference.com, get your tickets. Hope to see you guys out there. And if you play poker, we'll dance. (laughs) You'll probably beat me, but we'll dance. Uh, I hope to see you guys out there. Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome Patrick to the show. Patrick, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Wes. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate being here, and I'm very excited to uh, hear this full encounter. I know it happened out there in Iowa. Um, If you would, would you kind of start from the beginning and walk us into this encounter? How long ago did it happen? Uh, What were you guys out doing? And then, if you would, just kind of walk us into the whole thing. Well, I got fond into moving, just like everybody does, and we never like it. My girlfriend and I are... She's like, please just help us. You know, they don't have any money, and they had to move practically overnight. We had to have it done. Within 24 hours, they were being evicted. So, of course, we had to help them, you know, move. I had to buy the beer. I had to buy the pizza because they didn't have any money. And, you know, it's a typical move thing. We uh, started moving about, oh, I'd say about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And it was uh, March, probably second week of March, about 2007. Very cold, probably 30 degrees, 25 degrees. Pretty cold winter. There wasn't a whole lot of snow on the ground, but there was, you know, a little bit of snowpack here and there. We'd been moving a couple hours, and I decided, well, let's let's make a big bonfire, and maybe we'll, you know, hang out, have some burgers afterwards. Uh, we'd been moved, moved about three or four hours, got all the big stuff in, and the girls put it in the radio, and then they turned that up, and we're playing music and hanging everything up. The girls, they were oblivious to everything. They, they had some music so loud, and they were in just one room. They didn't know what we were doing. We were outside building up the fire, and we'd had it going. Oh, this thing was 
huge. We've been dragging trees out of this uh, stand to draw trees, some deadfall and whatever else we could find, poured some gas on it, turned it into a giant bonfire. Super hot. So we kept moving. We'd stop and go outside and have a beer once in a while. It was a little picnic table. And, uh, well, it was pretty much an average move. Well, it was way out in the middle of nowhere in this little farmhouse, uh, Avoca, Iowa, I think it was. Well, yeah, Avoca. Just a little dot town, maybe a thousand people. I'm not even sure. Well, we moved till about 2, 2.30 in the morning, maybe 3 o'clock. Really late because they really needed this done. We were all tired and just, I'd had enough. I wanted to go home, had it. And these guys, they were really appreciative, of course. And they says, all right, you know, this is great. Let's go out and have beer. You guys just get out of here. And we just, we put all the beer in the snow. There was a little, little snow drift out there. What was left of winter. Pulled the beer out of the snow. And and this fire was just roaring still. Flames were probably seven, eight feet high, just really hot. And the wind kept shifting back and forth, so we'd have to keep moving to get the smoke away from us. So what I remember last is I put my foot on, t- on the picnic table bench, popped the beer cap, just about to take a drink. And from... Behind the fire, probably 20 yards, there was a big old oak tree that somebody had planted maybe, you know, 100 years ago, just a gorgeous tree. This thing just came to life. It was incredible. The tree limbs were probably 40 feet long, and they were just over the fire. So it, it, it was like being in a horror movie. This one tree limb went up. In, into the darkness, just you couldn't see it, and then crash, just right down next to the fire, and there were three parts and bark and just flying. And then the next thing was this ungodly, un, this unholy roar. Just a, I don't even have a word. It was so loud it just vibrated your body, and all I wanted to do was just run but it was like i had to stay i'm not i'm thinking what kind of hell am i in what is what is this you know you just i didn't know what i was looking at i i had to see what was going on and i looked and looked i concentrated i just what and another the tree limbs were just up and down and crashing and just ah, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. My mind is like run but I'm the kind of person where I need to know what, what I'm looking at. But my body said, You're gonna be torn to pieces. That it, it's like prehistoric fear. It just something was it said go. But and just beyond the firelight, there was this mammoth thing, this thing. It was a monster. It was a creature, an unholy beast. It was, it was, it was giant. It was a giant. It was, and I'm not, it was probably 10 feet tall. It was had to be. Uh, I couldn't believe it. And it was just outside the fire. You could just make out the silhouette. I could not believe it. I have never in my life cared or believed in anything like this. Uh, it, I looked at the guy next to me, and his eyes were as big as saucers, and I think he was screaming. I couldn't tell because I couldn't hear him. Uh, he was frozen. He was frozen. And after... God, it felt like forever. This thing just, it, it was just so loud. And it roared for so long. Uh, every, and then we just snapped, and I think he ran around the picnic table completely, screaming. And I grabbed him, 
and we ran right. Well, if I hadn't grabbed him, where this guy would have went, he was just, he'd lost us. He was gone. We went right into the house. Just, uh, we, we didn't know what was happening. Well, when, when there's something like this hits you, it's just, yeah, it's terrifying trying to put answers to what's going on in the moment. But while you're trying to figure it out at the same moment, you're hoping you don't die in the process. You know what I mean? It's, Terrifying. Yeah, I, I have never known terror, sheer horror. I've watched horror movies my whole life, but it's never been conveyed like this. I, I was petrified beyond belief, but I didn't even know that feeling. I didn't know what that felt like. It was, uh, I didn't know what this thing wanted. I didn't know why it was doing this. And it went on for what seemed like forever. I mean, this poor tree, you could, the bark was just flying off of it. I mean, this was a big old oak tree and it, the, the limbs were snapping and the, the, the width of these tree limbs were as big as my waist. And you could hear the core of the tree cracking. It was torturing this tree and it was scaring the life out of us. And I don't know what it wanted, why it would do something like that. We weren't doing nothing. We were talking quietly by a fire. And I know this thing, it had to have smelled this fire from God only knows how far away. It, it was roaring. You could practically forge steel in this fire. We'd had it so hot all day. It had been going for so long. I don't know where it came from. And I never want to see it again. It was a giant. It was, it was incredible. You could make out just barely like the like fur just silhouetted by the flames. It was it was like something you'd see in a horror movie. It was just incredible. I, I Yeah, I hear you. Was it on two legs when he saw it or was it down on all fours? No, it was standing. It was it had gripped these three limbs and these three limbs were were I couldn't reach them. I could barely reach them standing in the back of a truck. They were so high. And they were probably, I would say, six feet apart and facing uh, at an angle out. And was it and, was it screaming or was it roaring or a little bit of both? It, was, it wasn't really. A, it was a low, super, like an angry, rah, just a terrible, ferocious, like it gave it all it had it really wanted us to know it was there and it was just horrifying i that was it's the loudest thing i have ever heard a living thing better it was just horror <laughs> and every night i well not every night but most of the time i'll get up no night and check all the windows this thing has really traumatized me. Yeah, I can imagine, especially an encounter like this to where you're doing nothing to provoke it. And, you know, to break an oak tree is – oak's pretty hardy. It's one of the toughest woods to actually, you know, bend and break. Only, it, may, it was only maybe 30 feet away at the most. It was right there. And I didn't hear a single sound. This thing crept up on us like – I couldn't believe it got to drop on us. It was, we had gone down into this draw to, you know, to pick up lumber, whatever, you know, to feed the fire. And it was full of, you know, just old dead wood. And every step you took, there would be a snap or a crackle or there was leaves and rustling, whatever, down there. It just didn't make sense. This thing, I don't know how long it had been there. I don't know how many of them there were. Uh, I don't know what his motivation, why he would do that. Yeah, I want to ask you, so you guys get up, you guys run to the house, and, and what happens next? Oh, dear God, we... Oh. <laughs> well, we grab the fridge, put it in front of the door, <clears throat> and we're laying on the floor, pushing the refrigerator against the the door and we're looking at each other thinking 
I said, what, what about the front door? And he's like, oh, my God. He gets up, and he runs in the other room, and he stops, and he goes, you need to come in here right now. I go, what about the, he goes, no, just come here. I go into the other room, into the front room, the front doors, and there's a giant picture window. It's ridiculous. It's six feet by six feet. It's giant. It's like, we're dead. We're, we're just dead. And so we went back into the kitchen, which had turned all the lights off. And uh, we're just peeking out the window towards the fire. And here come our girlfriends. They had the radio, and they don't know what's going on. They go, what are you guys doing? Well, you, you didn't hear that? No. And we tried to describe what we had heard and what we'd been through. Like, you must have seen the coyote. Or <laughs> what? We, you know, we knew what it was. It was unmistakable. There was no way it could be anything but what it was. And they were just mad. Like, the beer's outside. You need to go get it. I will never go outside again. <laughs> no, we're not going out there until the sun comes up. And they were just like, well, I'll go out there. No, no, no one is going out there. And as a matter of fact, we barricaded the back door and we locked ourselves into the, there's one room with no windows. And they weren't happy about it, but they didn't experience what he, what him and I had. I mean, we were literally, we felt like we were just about to be dinner. And if, I think if we had have gone in any wrong direction, we might have been. I don't know what this thing wanted. I just know that whatever it was, I, I don't know. It, that's one thing that's plagued me for years. I don't know what it wanted. Why would it do that? Did it want the fire? Did it want to just warm up on the fire all by itself? I don't know. It was doing fine. It snuck up on there. We never knew. But, man, it just unleashed holy hell on us, and I never want that to happen again. Yeah, I can imagine. Ever. I can imagine. Did you, um, so did it leave, or did, was it around the home the rest of the night? Uh, you know, I don't know. It was all we could do to look out the windows. We were so scared. We thought it was going to just walk right through the house. This thing was so large. So it was the biggest thing I've ever seen. I knew it could just go right through this old house, this cracker box of a farmhouse. It could just tear right through it. Like, like tinder box, just, just come right through it. And we, all we did was just barely look out the window at the fire. And, you know, as I, we didn't hear anything. We didn't smell anything, not even a crackle, nothing, nothing. I, I, I don't know. And we were just petrified beyond belief. There wasn't any way we were opening that door for anything. We weren't going to call the cops. We didn't even have a phone. Yeah, terrifying. Reminds me of the account, um, and you've probably heard the show, Patrick, I did um, with the gentleman who was out hunting. And this is like in the early 60s. And he's out hunting, and he's probably about, I'll have to go back and listen to the show. I want to say he's about 100 feet from this thing. And he turns around, and what he describes is – he describes this half-man, half-chimpanzee thing. But the one part of his encounter that reminds me of yours is it was grabbing everything it could grab, tree limbs, everything, breaking them, shaking them, and just going oh nuts and roaring at them, just screaming at this guy. And he's looking at it, and, and he had done nothing, done absolutely nothing to set this thing off. It's oh. not like he was taking pop shots or – um, he was actually yeah. scouting for hunting is what he was doing. Then he'd only gotten about 100 feet away from his truck, and this thing just was going nuts. And it, it actually did end up attacking him. Um, so, oh it's, my gosh. you know, I think that is your – that's one of the last things they do before they actually attack you. They'll do a display, and if you don't leave, someone's getting it. I think we were very close to being shredded, just torn to pieces. Because this guy I was with was too petrified to move. And then he ran practically in towards it. And I don't understand how that, why would, why would anyone do that? He was, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen anyone that scared in my entire life. And he almost ran towards it. I had to 
grab him and pull him in the right direction. And I mean, this thing was so incredibly loud. I, I, I can't even compare it to anything. I was at the zoo, Henry Dorley Zoo in Omaha is great. And I was there one time and I had, it was like a hundred degrees, super hot day. And I had squirted some water on a Bengal tiger. They were outside, just, they were hot. They were angry. They were just very unhappy. And this thing backed up and ran towards me and roared as loud as it could. And half the zoo came running over to see what had happened. And that's, that was a minuscule sound compared to what I heard. This thing had pipes like I couldn't, I, I can't even imagine. It's just too amazing. I, I didn't know anything like that existed. You know, being from Nebraska, we don't, we, you see the film, the, the Patty film, and you go, well, that's your problem. I'm never going there. We're, we live in Nebraska. We don't have that, whatever that thing is. And that's all. You know, we just, you know, it's just something we don't dwell on because we, we have yeah. virtually plains. There's nothing. A few trees here and there, but mostly it's just flat field. Same with Iowa. Just a few tree trees here and there. I don't know how this thing got to where it was. It's, it just boggles the mind. I don't understand it. Well, I want to ask you, and, did you, uh, did you ever talk to your ex or her family and said, Hey, listen, <laughs> here's what we ran into. You guys need to start talking. What's going on out here? Yeah, I've tried. She's, she, she's like, fine. If you think you saw it, that's fine. <laughs> no, for sure. I saw this giant creature, and I'm never going back there ever again in my life. You shouldn't either. And I, as a matter of fact, she told me they stayed, I only think they stayed the weekend, and then they moved away from there. This house had been abandoned for, I don't even know how long. And I think maybe that's why. I don't know. Because it, it was a farmhouse probably 10 miles away from town, and it's a small town. And... There's two forks of a, of a river that go on either side of this town, and they must travel that route. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> I, I don't know what they do or yeah. where they go. But I do know it had to have smelled that fire and got curious and then furious. <laughs> I just can't put it together. Yeah, it's tough sometimes, you know, when you – um, and I was going to ask you the question, but I think I already know the answer, but w why it would go off like that. And in some situations, they just do, and there's no rhyme or reason behind it. Well, I think these things have been around so long, they're probably so inbred that uh, various mental issues are commonplace. So who knows what these things are capable of? Well, and you saw it with the oak tree. They're They're definitely capable of a lot. I couldn't have done that with a pickup truck and a log chain. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Trust me. And I've tried, so I know firsthand. That's just sheer power. That's just sheer power. This thing was a this, this thing was an abomination, a giant monster. I I couldn't. My mind was trying to tell me this is not what you're looking at. This got to be something else. It's got to be some kids playing a prank. But my, there's no way. There's nothing on God's green earth that can create a sound that loud. And they also move these this poor tree, just turn it into garbage. Literally. I mean there was there was bark. You could hear this tree just the inside of this old oak just groaning and cracking and coming apart. And that morning, as soon as the sun came up, we I moved the refrigerator away from the door like it did any good, you know what? And I looked out, and and this poor guy's with me. He's like, "Man, dude, are you sure?" Like, oh, well, we gotta go somewhere, you know. So I go back there, and this tree's wrecked. It's just destroyed. And and behind this tree is a ravine that goes down about twenty feet, and it goes back for fifty, sixty yards, stuff like that. This thing easily could have gone through there, you know, whatever. Uh, I didn't have the presence of mind to go looking for hair or footprints or not. I didn't care. I wanted a way. And the one thing we did do, I had my girlfriend back her truck up, and I stood in the back of the truck 
bad. There's a little Toyota. And I could just barely reach these limbs. And I said, well, explain this. She's like, well, I don't know. She, she was in total denial. I don't even know. And there was bark everywhere. And the core of this tree, you could smell like fresh wood when it's cracked. You could smell it and see it. it, it you could see the cracks through this poor old tree. Just, you know, oh, gosh, it was just the power. I couldn't have done that. I don't know how I could have created that with any kind of power tools other than a bulldozer. This thing is it just, wow. I didn't know these things existed. I never cared. And now all I want to do is stay away from any kind of forest. Yeah. Well, once I can you know, Once that. you know what's in there, you don't want ever to come yeah. across one of these again. And I can definitely understand that. I think most people could understand that your feelings on it. And you're, you're right. When you do have an experience like that, it's and – you, and you'll find, Patrick, um, how many years back did this happen? Uh, 2007. March. 2007. So, you, and you've listened to probably some shows. So it'll drive you nuts. Um, I mean, you you had an encounter way before I did, but after you have an encounter like this, and then you hear of someone who had more of a gentle, like they ran into, you know, the gentle forest giant. Yeah, it almost will drive you nuts because you're like, no, not even close. These say, you know, yeah. and you have that mentality of what they are. And, and I went through that for a long time. I had a very hard time. Someone said it hit, you know, looked human or was gentle. I almost wouldn't listen to them just because it was nothing yeah. like what I had experienced. But not every experience well, is like that. You know what I mean? The problem with that is that I've noticed with each encounter that I've heard on your show, when you ask them, what do you think it is? Well, that varies with with the encounter. If it's a violent encounter, it's a monster. Yeah, of course. If it's if it's a berry picking, peaceful, happy encounter where they just you know wave back and they're all smiles, then then there's some sort of primate that you know maybe needs some love or some hot dogs. I don't know, you know, <laughs> to feed them whatever. Uh, it just varies, but. I know what I saw, and this thing is is just sort of a homicidal killer. Like if we were to let um, somebody that's committed a triple murder out of the prison and just throw him in the forest and call him a myth. Ah, he didn't exist. He'd just throw him out there, and well, people come up missing. We don't know. Uh, it's I don't understand the thinking behind that. I, I know they're there. A lot of people do. Uh, we just. How do we fix it? How do we address that? It just terrifies me that this thing is allowed to roam the earth and then just eat at will, whatever it wants, whenever it wants. And if you talk about it, you're ostracized. You're, oh, that is, that's not real. Well, it doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. I, I just don't understand why that it's that way. Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on your your experience with them and you even see that with the native americans i know everyone looks at the native americans like they're they know everything and they don't um what's fascinating is when you start looking at native americans it depends on their encounter with them is how they'll speak about them if it's somewhat friendly well they're the they're the big brother they're the the boss of the woods they're, they're right. our forest friends right. the apaches though will tell you a different story they'll tell you to kill every one of them you see uh, they have no love for them so it really depends on what tribe you talk to as far as how they perceive these creatures. You know, some wow. of them will talk to them like they're cannibals. They eat people. We want nothing to do well, with them. Uh, from what I understand, inbreeding, which I'm sure they are quite capable of because you're running around naked in a forest. You know, I don't know if they can discern that's my brother over there or whatever. You know, I don't know what kind of intelligence level they have. But the, the inbreeding... Also, you also get cannibalism with that. You know, it's literally like the hills have eyes. It's, it's, these things are, they're just bad. There's nothing good that come out of them. They eat, they sleep, and they make more. That's all. You know, they're, the intelligence they have is just enough to keep them hidden. And I don't like it a bit. Yeah. Well, I'm with you. I'm definitely with you on your feelings on it. And it's, you know, from doing the show, I think I've come to the conclusion not every encounter is going to be like that. 
Um, and I know not every encounter is like that, but I understand the way you feel. Trust me. If there's anyone on the planet that understands exactly what you're saying, it's me. Uh, and I'm with you yeah. on, on a lot of what you say. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, and then you brought it up earlier. What do you, what do you think that they are, Patrick? What's your honest opinion? Well, what, that's a tough question because what what I think they are is probably uh, that's it's really tough because I didn't get the look that a lot of people did. But what I think is they are the Enderthal. I really do. Maybe they and they've crossed. They've mixed with maybe humans a long time ago. These things are very old. They've been around a long time. We just can't deny the fact that, you know, we've been around a couple hundred years on this continent. You know, whatever, a thousand years over on that continent. These things right. have been around for forever. We don't know. And they're very good at what they do. They've been breeding with whatever they can get their hands on. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We don't know how what was successful along the line. And that is what's frightening because I've heard the Indians have been, you know, raided and they take the women and God only knows what they do to them. But over time, when you rape enough different things, who knows what's going to, what kind of abomination is going to come out of that. And if it's successful once, then you've got that trait in the line, in whatever bloodline, and then you can successfully pass it along. And it just it just depends on on the line and how what able what they're able to successfully breed with. And I'm sure well, they're animals; they try and breed with everything. I go I used to go out to ladies' night on Thursday. <laughs> I would find anything, but <laughs> yeah, but gotcha. these guys. You know, that's what animals do. They breed, they make more. And if you look similar to them, they're going to try. And over time, they could be a combination of many things because that's what they do best. They make more of them. So yeah, it's hard what to I say. think they are is a combination of whatever successful breeding they've had. And I'm, I just can't put that together. Yeah, and it terrifies me to even think what they are because they're animals and what they go, oh, oh yeah, that. Yeah, it makes you wonder though. Like with your encounter though, Patrick, um, you know the way it came in. If that would have been a grizzly bear, you guys would have been dead. If that would have been a cougar, you guys would have been dead. Um, but w what interests me about encounters like this is they come in. Obviously, if they just keep going, you're never going to hear them. I mean, that thing probably could have just kept walking. You would have never heard it. Um, right. And whether it snuck up on you or not. But either way, you guys didn't know it was there. So what's the point in making yourself known? And it's almost – it's curious because it's almost like – and maybe you have a different opinion than me. But when I hear the encounter, it's almost like they're itching for a fight. I'm going to show up. I'm going to scream. I'm going to bust this tree apart so you understand what you're getting involved with here. It's almost like provoking a fight for right. no reason. And and animals don't – normal animals don't do that. You know, if it would have been a grizzly bear, you guys would have been dead. Um, cougar? Yeah, or they would have taken food or whatever. Right. Yeah, I, under, I, I – this thing wanted to terrorize us. And if it would have done that to a herd of deer, they would have scattered and maybe there were half a dozen of them around waiting for them to – there be – too terrified to even understand where they were. They'd run into, you know, whatever, trees, and they could be scooped up easily. You know, that's that's what, over the years, I've, I've thought, you know, this thing, either it wanted to just be left alone by this fire so it could warm itself up, but it, it and it was so close to us. And that, in itself, is ridiculously terrifying, but it didn't have to do what it did. Right. Now, when it did, it exposed itself. And that even, it, it, I have more questions. Why? Why would, what, why would it do that? And, you know, it knew it was, you know, the dominant 
male of all of anything around us because it's it was as big as a dang the house. Why would it think that it needed to impose itself on us? I don't know. I can't. I can't put myself in its mind. Why it did that still plagues me. I, I there are probably a lot of simple answers, but there's only one right answer, and I don't know it. Well, I think a lot of times, too, in in situations like this, and probably some of the audience isn't going to like what I'm about to say, I think sometimes they get off on terrorizing people. I think they enjoy it sometimes. Um, You hear about them around people's homes, banging on the doors, coming up to the kids' windows, and I think sometimes they enjoy just terrorizing you. They're not really looking for... You know, obviously, I think they'll kill you and eat you if if they give, if given the opportunity. But I think the other side of the coin is it's not so much that they're looking to kill or eat you; it's terrorizing you. Enjoy watching you freak out and run. And yeah. you hear a lot of encounters like that where they will come out and they will just flat out terrorize someone, but they won't attack. But they'll ter- they do it in a way to. Well, I guess that's my. You know, uh, what I'm trying to say is what I said. I think they enjoy terrorizing people is what I'm trying to say. I think you may be right. I mean, this thing, it had done it before. You, It, it was very good at its, what it was doing. And I think it just wanted us either away or it was enjoying it because it put everything it had into it. It was quite a – it was the – I have never, I could never imagine a display like that anywhere, any for, at all. I've seen like silverback gorillas do their displays, and it's it's impressive. And you know there are lots of impressive creatures that do stuff, but this was it just destroyed a, this giant tree, and it was so loud. I don't. The English language doesn't have a word for that kind of sound. It's just it's it's so impossibly loud. You can't even tell someone. You can't convey how loud that was. It's like I would like going to a Metallica concert and standing in front of that big PV amp. That's not even close. It's similar that it vibrates your your internal organs a little, but this thing, this thing was, and yeah, I understand. So, I understand completely. It's like getting hit with a baseball bat. That's how I described even the growl. And it didn't roar at us. It growled at us. And I'm telling you, even up close, a very sinister growl, uh, the sound that comes out of it, I mean, it's not like from a throat. It's almost from a stomach is the type of sound it puts off. And it's a very large I, – I get completely what you mean. Did you and your that, – that buddy of yours, did you guys ever compare notes after that night? Uh, we talked that morning. And uh, he's like, man, I, and he was just, I, he, he had a weaker mind than I did. And he was just destroyed, destroyed. I don't think he co- could comprehend what happened to him. I could see him mentally just collapsing. So I'm like, wow, I'm backing out of this mess. Hi, good luck. And I just get me home and let's get the heck out of here. I, that poor guy, he, I never saw him again. He don't want to, I never wanted to. I didn't know him very well. Uh, they were nice enough, but, uh, it's like sticking your hand in a fire. I ain't going back into that mess and I never wanted to. <clears throat> I never went to that part of Iowa again. I never want to, and I don't talk about it with anyone because they look at you and they, you're out of your mind. Hang on, what are you crazy? How can anything get, you know, they think that the entire country is covered with people and there's no way they can get past us. And, you know, <laughs> well, you get up at three in the morning and see how many people are outside. It's pretty simple to figure out these things work best at night. If they can get walk right through town, you wouldn't hardly know. There's enough cricks to go through a lot of these small towns and they could just follow the crick right through and you'd never know. Yeah, none the wiser. I agree. And it, it's amazing because, you know, when they used to deliver papers, um, if you if you read on the BFRO thing, there's a lot of guys out there who are delivering papers at 3 o'clock in the morning, especially out here in Washington. 
And you'd be amazed how many of the people always saw this creature that early in the morning. And you're right, there's no one else out. I mean, you're, you'd be hard pressed to see another car come by, you know, until about 6 a.m. in a lot of these places. So um, I tend to agree with you. I think that they follow the waterways. I think they're they're closer to towns than people think. And I think they're closer to people's properties than they think. And I got a sneaky suspicion if you were able to talk to your ex-girlfriend's uh, folks, they probably would have told you they had some strange things happen around that property. They may not come out and say it's Bigfoot, but I, I guarantee they probably had some strange things going on around that property. And maybe it was something different. Maybe the creature had been watching that property for a while and you guys were different. You guys had never been there. A bunch of males sitting around the fire. And yeah, that could be. Yeah. you see these things, they, they tend to do that. When the husbands show up, when people have these things around their property, it's a husband, wife, and let's say some kids. Well, when the, the wife and the kids are there, it's one interaction. When the husband shows up, all of a sudden it gets aggressive. Um, and it makes you wonder if it's just another, they see us as another male showing up. And so they want to present their dominance. And I almost wonder if that maybe what was going on there. It's hard to say. I'm all okay. speculating. It's a possibility. There are so many, so many ways to go with this. But ultimately, that creature is the only thing that knows the answer to this. And one day it's got to be, it's got to be answered. We have to solve this. So I don't, I really don't agree with having a homicidal killer wandering free. Do we do that with our humanity? No, we scoop them up and throw them into prison for life. And just because it's an animal doesn't mean it's allowed to eat, you know, it's allowed to eat people. It's just wrong. And to bury that and pretend it doesn't exist and ostracize people that have seen it is even worse. It's a killer. It kills and it kills. It eats whatever it wants. Uh, I think there should be a bounty on these things, and that's all. Get rid of them. That's how I, that's how I feel. I hear you. And like I said, I understand the way you felt. Um, after my own encounter, Patrick, my, my famous saying at the time, which I wish I would have never said it, but my famous saying at the time was kill them all and let God figure it out. Um, cause that's yeah. the way I felt. I felt like the, you know, every one of them should be executed and, you know, let God figure it out. But, you know, those same people who, um, even the Bigfoot people will tell you, well, you know, uh, a grizzly bear can kill you too, or a cougar can kill you too. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> But if I'm in grizzly bear country, I'm going to take precautions because there's grizzly bears around. Everyone knows it. Same thing with cougars. If, if I'm out here in Washington State, I'm well aware of my surroundings. And I know there's cougars out here the size of me walking around on four legs. Problem with Sasquatch is people don't acknowledge it, it exists. And so you get in situations like you're in. And what the hell did we just run into? We just had the, as you put in your email, you know, hell just opened up and unleashed a beast on us. And that's how a lot of people oh, feel yeah. when they run into them. Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing with that, with these creatures is they're diabolical. They don't, they plan. They know they have just enough intelligence to make them dangerous. A cougar doesn't. Cougar just goes and eats, you know, whatever. These things plan a cougar doesn't terrorize. A bear does not terrorize. They just go and eat. They do what they do. They don't stalk. They don't hide. They, they're they omnivores. Well, the bear. But these things, they know. They know what they're doing. They don't, they, they're ninjas, man. They go, we should have heard this thing. It was a mammoth giant. It was almost as tall as the house. We should have heard something. Not a thing. Not a Nothing, and you don't uh, you don't just do that. You're you're trying to get in there and and do something evil. It's I just don't see it the way other people do. No, I understand. Well, what I you do. Mean. I I just want these things gone. There, there's no good reason to have them around. What's the good in studying this thing? It just. If you want to study it, put it in a, in a damn zoo. I don't think having them wandering around the countryside is a good idea because, well, they kill. They kill. They kill your livestock. They they kill whatever's close. And that's fine because that's 
what mammals do, but these things, they're just nasty. I'm sorry, I just, no, I after what I went through, this thing is, he's on my hit list. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure he had, I don't know if they have a sense of humor or not, but if he did, he probably laughed for weeks. Because we were, we ran around like little, scared little girls. I'm surprised we didn't pee our pants and just whine like little girls. This thing had us, oh, dear God, it was horrible. Gosh. Yeah. Just even thinking about it, this thing. It may it, it had it, it was so loud for so long. I have never, I couldn't even conceive of a a mammal doing that. Gosh, it's it's just incredible. Yeah, to know that that's out there, just wandering or anywhere it wants. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I understand. I, and I understand, like I said, I understand the way you feel. It's, um, I, I think when you've had an aggressive encounter and you've had something like what happened to you, you have a different mindset than most people. You know, I've had encounters where people uh, run into these things and it's somewhat of a friendly, you know, the creature really doesn't want to engage with you, but it's not being aggressive with you and it just kind of gets up and walks off. And that's the thing when, in this situation that's so odd because these things almost have personalities like humans. I'm not saying they're humans, but what I'm saying is, you know, you run into one guy, a human, and he's going to, let's say he's a dick. And then you run into another guy that's a pretty nice guy and he's pretty patient and he's, and there's no rhyme or reason for the difference between yeah. the two. And you brought yeah, up. That was, that's exactly right. Then, but just the one is, is my only encounter. And, I understand. I've listened to your show for about three months now, and I have heard such a wide variety of these encounters. It just and people that want to go back and see more. I mean, sure, there's a Mister Nice Guy Bigfoot, and then, uh, but I think there's been such. I'm sure they don't uh, get married and have kids and hang out in certain areas. They're animals. They're right. animals. They do what animals do. Otherwise, they'd be walking around in jeans and getting jobs. Well, they're not. Right. They run around naked and they have sex with whatever's close. Period. And there, there's no such thing as a nice animal. You know, they might have nice tendencies occasionally, but the product of inbreeding and being an animal, you're going to get animal behavior. It can be nice today. Or in an hour, it can, you know, shred you to pieces. It's just, it's, it's just wrong. There's no right about it. They don't, I don't care what other people say. These things are, you know, good for a minute or two, but ultimately it's going to, it's going to do bad. Yeah. There's no good reason for them to be around. No, I That's understand. how I feel. Yeah, I understand. I understand. And like I said, I mean, I've talked to guys in the military that claim to have killed them, and they describe, one guy told me they're abominations. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he goes, I don't know how to make it any clearer, Wes, they're abominations. Um, and he had no love for them either. He thought every one of them should be killed. And according to him, he had killed a couple of them. But it is, it's fascinating. And like I said, sometimes they behave like animals, and sometimes they don't. Some they see, They're very animal-like, but... There is this weird side to them to where you hear different personalities. You hear um, – I don't know that every one of them is a killer, but I think every one of them could be a killer very quickly. And the other thing, too, yeah. you hear – and you witnessed it firsthand – is uh, the, the short temper, the short fuse. And yeah. you hear that time and time again. Even people that think they're the friendly forest giants have run into these things that did have a short fuse and wasn't going to put up with any nonsense. And – just oh, gosh. kind of went nuts on them. Going back to your inbreeding comment, I thought of doing a show on that because there has some, there has been some encounters where I thought, I wonder if that was inbreeding. Um, there's a gentleman I had on from uh, California, and he was talking about um, seeing this one, and it, it acted like the crazy bag lady you see on the street. You know, it's throwing its mm -hmm. hands in the air and it's kind of mumbling it to itself, and I hate to say it, like you'd see like a homeless person, someone who's has some mental issues going on and and that's what how he describes it he and they would wa he would watch it come out of the forest and go down this path cross back over going into the other national forest almost on a daily basis and he said it would do these weird 
things with it, with its hands and it would mumble and it would stop and kind of do quick jerky motions like you see someone on drugs do quick jerky motions with their yep. body or their hands and that's kind of what he saw and I and I thought could it be that there is mental illness in these things and I guess there would be if there was inbreeding going on I can almost say how can there not be there would have to be have to it has to. the product of inbreeding is always always either there's there's deformation or retardation of a degree and you're running around in the forest naked you're going to have sex with whatever be it your sister your mother whatever's close whatever you know um over thousands and thousands of years it's going to pop up and these things you know they they're just smart enough to be dangerous there's just no getting around that they do exactly what animals do and it's terrifying because inbreeding can produce very violent behavior or very uh, a behavior that is radically changed over minutes can be I've met somebody that was the product of inbreeding, and he he was deformed, and he told me he was the product of inbreeding, and he was just nutty as a fruitcake, and God bless the poor kid. He, you know, it wasn't his fault, but you it do, can really damage your the bloodline over time. Yeah, you do see a lot of aggression with inbreeding, and sometimes I wonder, especially down south where these things are reported all the time, I often wonder – there must be some major inbreeding going on because in some areas they're known for being extremely aggressive. You know, the ambulance driver that broke down there in Texas and all of a sudden they start being getting attacked by these things for no reason. And they're just okay. stuck. Um, and so it does make you wonder if there's some inbreeding going on, you know, maybe in larger areas where there's more room to run around, there's probably more of them like here in the Pacific Northwest. You may not run into that as much as you would, down south where it's more pockets of forest as opposed to, you know, we have planes that crash out here and no one can find them because it's so rugged in some well, areas. I did hear a story about a plane crashing up there somewhere and they went to go up and get rescue them and there was nobody, nobody there. Something to that effect. Maybe that's an old wives tale I heard, but hmm. uh, still thriving. Yeah, it is. It is. And these things are frightening. And it's my warning to people, like I said, even whatever you think that they are, even if you think they're the, the, the friendly forest giants, always be aware of it because you might run into one that isn't the friendly forest giant. And he's going to have a short temper. And like in your case, I think you guys were close to being ripped apart. I think he was letting you guys know what he could do. And if you, like you said, you made one wrong move, you guys were dead. And we were we were literally one step away from him as, as tall, as big as this thing was one step and his arms, you could, you could make out his back, his shoulders. And if this thing was just giant, then there was the lump in the center was his head. I mean, it was just, it looked like a football player that had pads on, you know, and it was just, it was so wide. It took up so much and it was so unbelievable. It was giant. My mind is like, no, that's not that's not what you're looking. It's a gi no. I, it was hard for my mind to consume what I was looking at. It just wanted to go. Nope, 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 nope. That's not. No, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's a prank. Let's not believe this. But oh, I had to had to see what it. Man, it was incredible. It was so giant. I had come across I don't I don't know how big these things get. I don't even care. And I've listened to your show and mostly I hear they're like seven foot or eight. This thing was ridiculous. It was giant. Almost like a cartoon character so big, you know. Uh I can't even give you an analogy of what what it would look like. It was yeah. it was so wide. Oh, it was wider than my truck. It was almost as tall as the house. You know, where did you come from? This thing was just terror. It was, oh, I, I saw the Patty film and this, that thing was just kind of a nice looking roly poly, uh, 
uh, kind of a barrel chest. Or this thing was off the charts giant. Yeah, my mind couldn't even conceive of what I was looking at. I just no, 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 no. Yeah, it, I can uh, understand it, that. That's something I want to see twice. Yeah, it, it's terrifying. You know, it's uh, you know, don't blame me for not wanting to see it again. And uh, I really appreciate the fact that you'd come on and and share it, Patrick. I know you haven't shared it really with hardly anyone. Um, and the fact that you'd come on here and talk about it, I'm honored by it. So thank you. Uh, I'm honored by what you do. You you give people like us a voice. And I appreciate that because there are a lot of us. And what's unfortunate is the ones that aren't able to have the voice because they had the encounter and they lost. And I'm sure there are a lot of them. Probably more than than I would like to admit. That's for sure. Yeah, that is, it is tragic. But, I, but I, I really appreciate taking up your time and, and telling you my story of, you know, of of my nightmare that I have to live with. And I hope other people are able to come forward and, and share their stories as well. I hope I, I do some good for other people. Absolutely. Thank you again, Patrick. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Uh, please check out sasquatchchronicles.com. Again, I'm not on YouTube. Please, please go to sasquatchchronicles.com. Until next time, everyone. Some tone of